GE Galair, is Mr. and Dr. Gary Gillanders, last day in the Nijakas of the Viklian, Colossian, the Holyak, the Gisnil, Toriakta. Tom Shawfar, only the Don Uktar, and only Jagas Marin in the Holskull and Hall of Peter Mayhew. August Taos and Dunarm, Falcher Koroi, were no special to the Shah. Tom Wichin Shah, in you, Conkella Republic, a Yen of her and Gashka Kudul, Tajent Agi. It were game, it were. The gan were a good cursy lane, the couple of lane news. Law more of the other in the Hulskull at Tan, August Ukaj Nis Mo, August Nis Tavik to Yurish, and were sail fain. Gunmarishiv were game yaktur, August Tasulagum, Gunyari and Taliv, Cecil Tom at Row of Amach, where came ahead the good Hulskull in the Galliva. My name is Gary Gillanders, Vice Dean for Education and Students at the College of Science and Engineering. I'm representing the Deputy President and Registrar Professor Peter McHugh, and on behalf of the University of Galway, I want to extend you, to you all a very warm welcome to this ceremony. It's a special day for us all in the University, and I want to start by introducing you to the various people who are central to today's event. To my left is the President of the University of Galway, Professor Kieran O'Hogarty, who presides over the ceremony. With him is Ms. Heather Murphy, who will open and close the, the formal part of the ceremony. And behind me is Professor Garant Howes, the Executive Dean of the College of Business, Public Policy and Law, who will present students to the President. We are also joined by colleagues from the College who have played their part in ensuring that you were able to have graduated this university. I now hand over to the Student Union President, Ms. Fianney Ronald, who will make a commencement address after which Ms. Heather Murphy will open the formal proceedings in Latin. Gurmaga, a Akarja, you've made it. Through all the Elwoods jokes, the Suits jokes, all the family members saying, when I get in trouble, you'll help me out. You've made it. All the work, all the struggles, and the moments where it may have felt like you're on the wrong path have all led you to this moment, to this ceremony, this celebration of your hard work and power. You entered the University of Galway a different person to who you are today. Today, you are entering a network of alumni that reaches all corners of our little Emerald Isle and branches as far as ours on Uchtaran. I believe there's something that makes all of us important, and that's that no two people in this room have had the same university experience. What causes one person's struggle could be another person's strength. In spite of all the barriers you may have faced, here you are today. I remember when I finished my degree, I felt a bit lost. I didn't really know what direction I'd be going in or where my path would lead me. So normally, as I'm sure every young woman does, I started looking into my great-grandfather. He was a man I'd never known much on account of the fact that he was born in the late 1800s and I was born a wee bit after that. However, I found a book of prose written by himself and his friends and his entry was as follows. Says the old fox terrier to his little pup, in all your misfortunes, keep your tail up. It's a quote I've held with me since. It's so easy to discount yourself, to think you're doing something wrong, to think that you should just stop trying. However, someday, these days will be just memories. The days of going to Salt for a quick pint between classes, circling the library twice looking for a seat, going to society events, club days, or even just showing up to lectures and going straight home are now officially behind you. Nourish your curiosity, your want for more. Let yourself enjoy the moment. Throw your ideas at the wall and see what sticks, because someday you'll be the old fox terrier, wishing you'd, wishing you'd let yourself live a little more when you were still a pup. The speech I'm giving today is called the commencement address. I was writing it the other night and thinking, sure, why is it called the commencement address? I'm not the first person up here. I don't open the ceremony. So I looked it up. It's called the commencement address because it marks your transition as graduates, from students to bachelors, masters, and doctors. Your life is beginning today. You've done the work. You've written the essays and the reports. You've sat the exams. You've put in the hours to change yourself from who you were before to who you are today. Today is a day to reflect on the sacrifices and accomplishments of the past, on the hope, excitement, and responsibility of the future. It's a day where family and friends visit campus, and for many, it's their first time. It's something I've always appreciated about coming onto campus during the graduations, is that you can sense the achievement in the air, classmates seeing each other after long summers, but more so than that, you can feel the communal pride, the excitement of parents and siblings, chosen family and friends, as they watch you reach the summit of your work and get to enjoy your celebration for it. It is the case for many of you here today that this will be your last formal on-campus encounter. 
Today is the day that your life begins. There'll be a lot of time spent today where you'll be being pulled back and forth for photos, should put the cap on, now throw it in the air, now do a serious one, now take a nice one for your nanny. I'm sure many of you have spent time thinking, oh, sure, where will I book the lunch? Do I have time to get my hair done in the morning? Should I invite him or her? But this moment belongs to you. Through the hubbub and the noise, this day belongs to you, and it's always been for you. I'll finish up with my favorite Shanukle. Being all look le or lack on Duris. There's beauty to be seen on the doorstep. The University of Galway has been a place you can call home, and now it's time to emerge to your doorstep and enjoy the world. There will be times where it feels scary, where you may feel unprepared, but there's nothing that can stop you from achieving your full potential, and I can only hope the University of Galway has given you the correct tools to do this. Class of 2024, Kogorgis Okri Irv, you've done it. Pre honorables, presse, tota ke universitas. Haik comitia universitarie, hudi convecta sot. It quidam omnes ad gradum academum, e adam diploma academum admitatur. A OSK present antabis, Professor Grant Howlis. Pray on labis, praises toteke universitas. College of Business, Public Policy and Law. Doctor of Philosophy, PhD Law. Presento vobis hank miam filiam quam sio tam moibus quam doctrina habilem et idoneum esse qua admintanto ad gradum doctoratus philosophia idque tibi fede mia testo axpondeo toteke academia. Ego alteratata mihi concesse, admitto te ad gradum doctoratus philosophiae. Daisy Nabasitu is awarded a PhD in human rights for research supervised by Professor Siobhan Mullally, Professor Anna Arstein Kerslake on migrant domestic workers, labor exploitation, and anti trafficking laws in Uganda and, South, and Saudi Arabia. Honours Bachelor of Civil Law. Presento vobis hasque mias filias filiosque meos, quos omnes sior tamoibus quam doctrina habilis et idoneus esse qui admintanto ad gradum baccalaureatus in jura civili honora cursa confecto, ique tibi fide mia testo axpondeo totique academia. Ego autoritata mihi concesse, admitta vos ad gradum baccalaureatus in jure civili honoro corso confecto. Kaylee Buchan. <laughs> Emma Kate Burke. Catherine Clancy. <laughs> Ava Cullinan. <laughs> Neve Maria Dory. Maxwell Francis Downing. Adam Dunn. Connor Eastwood.
Kira Ennis. Evelyn Eros. <laughs> Donilda Assage. <laughs> Samuel Feely. Ashling Flynn. <laughs> Ali Bernadette Kivana. <laughs> Emma Sarah Kennelly. Dermot Cornelius Kilgallen. <laughs> Andrew King. <laughs> Maeve Josephine King. Katie Madden. <laughs> Zoya Kate McCran. <laughs> Lauren McDaniel Ryan. Colum McDonough. <laughs> Jordan McDonnell. <laughs> Holly McHale. Lauren Mohan. <laughs> Sinead Nelson. Maeve Onya Nee Dufig. Grace Nutley. Cheyenne Won Okabe. <laughs> Donica Odoon. <laughs> Vladimir Romanov. Katrina Sheridan. <laughs> T 
Tara Ann Sutton. Ryan Waterhouse. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Civil Law and Business, Christian Jacob Backham. <laughs> Rosie Brannock. Zara Kate Campbell. <laughs> Maeve Carr. <laughs> Maeve Colloran. Ema Collins. <laughs> Catherine Flanagan. <laughs> Jonathan Foster. Jack Freeman. <laughs> Amy Gallagher. <laughs> Dara Gibson. Neve Glynn. <laughs> Madeline Maeve Hayes. <laughs> Valerie Marie Hayes. Louise Hogan. <laughs> Iona Kevin Hurricane. <laughs> David John Cavanna. Grace Lennon. <laughs> Amy Lorinenko. <laughs> Rachel Lynch. Jay Maguire. Claire Mary McCormack. Kitty Mae McCormack. Jack McKeon. Ellen McLaughlin. <laughs> Neve McManus. <laughs> Alex.
Alexander Mayor Nicholas. Oshin Moran. Ellis Cameron Murphy. Shauna Murphy. Kono Patrick Murphy. Sophie J. Neville. Siobhan Lee Nocton. Georgie O'Brien. Celine O'Donnell. <laughs> Avino Grady. <laughs> Redmond O'Hanlon. Darren O'Malley. <laughs> Kalinda Owens. <laughs> Quiva Pegley. Anna Rafter. <laughs> Karenna Ava Sheehan. <laughs> Ashley Shields. Honours Bachelor Civil Law, Criminology and Criminal Justice. Dervla Cannon. <laughs> Liam Cleary. Cleary. <laughs> Emily Crotty. Mia Daly. <laughs> Amy Darcy. <laughs> Emily Donnellan. Amber Holly Guilfoyle. <laughs> Hugh Hunt. <laughs> Marie Onya Keogh. Penny Lee. <laughs> Alisa Mary Lindsay. <laughs> A 
Adam Marshall. <laughs> Eve McGinley. <laughs> Amy McLaughlin Woodforth. <laughs> Kira Mulkerin. Lornade Ni Fatata. Grace O'Brien. Donna O'Kane. Charlie O'Meara. <laughs> Michaela Roach. <laughs> Emma Walsh. Anne White O'Brien. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Civil Law and Human Rights. Isabella Beaumont. <laughs> Grace Carhill. Emily Jane Crow. <laughs> Molly Donnelly. <laughs> Leah Doyle. Kelly Duane. <laughs> Laura Egan. <laughs> Isabella Gannon. Ellen Given. <laughs> Emma Halpin. <laughs> Kelly Huang. Emily Kelly. <laughs> Annie Lovisetto. <laughs> Sean McCullum. Roshi McGrath. <laughs> Fika McInerney. <laughs> Tom O'Connor. Daniel O'Grady. <laughs> Anne
Alina Leandra O'Leary. Gronje Walsh. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Civil Law and Taxation, Adam Carton. <laughs> Tommy Earls. Courtney Healy Powell. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Corporate Law. Presento vobis hosci mios filios quos omnis sio tamoibus quam doctrina habilis et idoneus esse qui admintanta a gradum baccalaureatus injuri quod ad societatum res pertinet. Pertinet on her cursor confecto, it care tibi fide mea testo ax bondeo totique academia. Ego or tartata mihi concessit, mitovos ad gradum baccalaureatus in iuri quod societum res pertinet on her cursor confecto. James Michael Fitzpatrick. Lorcan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Bachelor of Laws, LLB. Presento vobis hasci meus filius filium que meum quod quos omnis sio tam moibus quam doctrina habilis et idoneus Essay qui adventanta a gradum baccalotarius in utroque jure tam civile quam canonico honora cursa confecto, que tibi fide mea testa axpondeo totique academia. Ego octartata mihi concessit, mitavos ad gradum baccalaureatus in utroque jure tam civile quam canonico honora cursa confecto. Stephen Barry. Andrew Brennan. <laughs> Hannah Carr. <laughs> Alison Carroll. <laughs> Anna Carroll. Lucy Dowling. <laughs> Ruslana Drozdenko. Paris Ediag Bonia. Adam Egan. Robin Flaherty. Sarah Fannin. <laughs> Ava Kate Gorgon. <laughs> Luka Gokovic. <laughs> Ella Greeley.
Sarah Grunenberg. Charlotte Olahume. Dorian Jaros. James Michael Joyce. Jonathan Kelly. Roisin Kerrigan. Shauna Kerrigan Moilet. Julia Claudia Corona. Julia Langeland. <laughs> Amy Lawless. <laughs> Angela Lynch. Patrick Maher. <laughs> Colonel Joseph Martin. <laughs> Veronica Mazakina. Rupert McCauley. <laughs> Alexandria McGrath. <laughs> Kira Monaghan. <laughs> Abby Mullin. Aaron Murray, Murray. <laughs> Danielle Louise Nevin. <laughs> Dara Nolan. <laughs> Laura O'Malley. Chloe Louise O'Shea. <laughs> Graham Porter. <laughs> Laura Rooney. <laughs> Dean Treacy. Bronwyn Alice Verrett. <laughs> Mia Walsh. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Commerce Accounting. Presento vobis hasci mias filius filiosque mios quos omnis seo tam memoribus quam doctrina habilis et idoneus esse qui admintanto ad gradum Baccalaureatus Mercatore Honor Curso Confetto, Ike Tibe Fede, Mia Testo Axmondeo, Totike Academia. Ego Autartata Mihi Concesse, Mutavos Ad Gradum Baccalaureatus Mercatore Honor Curso Confetto. Molly Marie Beatty.
Patrick Cryan. Connor Dixon. Anna Fahi. Dennis Klimanoff. Leah McKinney. Neve Miskell. Jack Malloy. Ola Marie Murphy. Saidev Sagar. Vito Saju. Matthew Thompson. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Commerce Accounting Global Experience. Maeve Burke. <laughs> Emmett Burke. Kelly Cahill. Miles Depina. Liam Egan. Evan Glynn. Luke Kieran Hamill. Alana Marion Jackson. Owen Keehan. <laughs> Owen Keo. Fiona Kudzia. <laughs> Rachel Page Lacey. <laughs> Kate Lawler. Kaho Madden. <laughs> Kelly McFadden. <laughs> Sophie Moran.
Sophia Helena O'Callaghan. Dara O'Connor. Ethan O'Grady. Ola O'Regan. Beth Sullivan. Emma Maria Vallely. Megan Wall. Wanfred Wakefield Waterman. Honours Bachelor of Commerce French, Dennis Buterin. <laughs> Jack Corridan. <laughs> Louise Darcy. Roisin Carmel Dodd. <laughs> Hannah Lavelle. <laughs> Elise McCarthy. Therese McLaughlin. <laughs> Rebecca Murphy. <laughs> Oshin Murray. <laughs> Kiran O'Donoghue. Victoria Tarasova. <laughs> Leah Tunney. <laughs> Kira Waldron. Honours Bachelor Commerce Legelga, Emma Jane Burke, <laughs> Kate Healy, <laughs> John Higgins. Rachel Kelly. <laughs> Deirdre Larkin. <laughs> Fanula McLaughlin. Honours Bachelor of Commerce German, Sarah Burke. <laughs> R 
Rosa Bridget Byrne. Ola Mary Corbett. Ashton Doherty. Chloe Fleming. Killian Glackin. <laughs> Kieran Harkin. <laughs> Cleona Haven. Neil Johnston Lowry. <laughs> Eleanor Nugent. <laughs> Saive Mora Oriadon. Magdara Trainer. <laughs> Honours Bachelor of Commerce Spanish, Lola Campbell. <laughs> Ema Delaney. Fergus Anthony Brian Early. <laughs> Emma Jane Flynn. <laughs> Fraser Gain. <laughs> Eva Geraghty. Rebecca Keelan. <laughs> Owen McCarthy. <laughs> Daniel McGowan. Tommy McNeela. <laughs> Eliska O'Malley. <laughs> Roisin Tolland. Honours Bachelor of Science, Business Information Systems. Presenter of Orbis Hasker Mias Filius Filiosque Mias, Quos Omnis Sio Tam Moribus Quam Doctrina Habilis et Idoneus Esse Qui Adventanto Ad Gradum Baccalauratus in Scientia Honor Cursa Confecto, Idque Tibi Fide Mia Testo Axpondeo Totique Academia. Ego octartata mihi concessa, mitra vos ad gradum baccalaureatus in scientiae honora corso confecto. Christiana Aina. <laughs> Rhys Barden. <laughs> Rhys Barden. 
Alana Blaco. Adrian Buzoskowski. Evan Joseph Cagney. Brian Cheggy. Ilana Clancy. Robert Croche. Andrew Fahey. Mark Gibbons. Liam Gilligan. <laughs> Cahorn Hallinan. <laughs> Jennifer Holland. Stanley Ibenye. <laughs> Lauren Keane. <laughs> Brian Keating. David Kelly. <laughs> Yufan Ko. <laughs> Ifelina. Quiva and McGraw. <laughs> Ewan McLaughlin. <laughs> Connor McMahon. Daniel McNulty. <laughs> Timothy McSweeney. <laughs> Kevin Nugent. Rory James Michael Gorman. <laughs> James O'Reilly. <laughs> Sharon Caffey Redmond. Mohamed Saoudi. <laughs> Amber Mary Sweeney. <laughs> Q 
Quiva Walsh Kelly. Quiva Wickstead. Pre honorables pricey Totake Universitas. Haike Comitia Universitaria, Hudi Convictata Son et Quidem, Hominis ad Maxime Exime ad Gratus Academidus Honoris Causa Admit Tatura, Doctoris in Scientia Economica, Causa para Professor John McHale, Presentatabit a Danny McCoy. Uktuan, Muintana Hulskala, Agatha Dune Gine Ushla. It gives me enormous pleasure to introduce Danny McCoy to you as a worthy recipient of an honorary doctorate in economic science from the University of Galway. A native of Tume, Danny attended Tume CBS, now merged into St. Jollets. A keen basketball player, Danny played for both his school and also Team West. He completed a Bachelor of Commerce degree at UCG, now University of Galway, where he took options in economics and mathematics. While at UCG, Danny competed at middle distance as part of the Varsity Athletics Club and won the Connacht Junior 10K Road Race in 1986. It should be said that while Danny was an intellectually gifted student, he did not neglect the social side of life, you'll be glad to hear. One of his good friends from the time, uh, here today, recounts how Danny went, once went out for a really uh, good night out, and it's important to note that it was a Tuesday night. Being a dedicated student, he was up early the next morning feeling surprisingly refreshed. But in class, he was puzzled that he didn't recognize anyone. Eventually, he, realizing that he was in the, the, the uh, right class, uh, though, so he was in the wrong class, uh, sorry, though, though he was in the right lecture hall. It slowly dawned on Danny that it was actually a uh, Thursday, not a Wednesday, and he had slept through an entire day, <laughs> explaining why he was feeling uh, so refreshed. After successfully completing his BCom, Daddy studied for a master's in economic science degree at UCD where he continued his athletics career, winning the cross-country team gold and individual silver for the 10K at the 1988 Varsity Championships. Underlining his academic ta talent, he became a full-time lecturer in economics at NIHE Dublin, now DCU, at the, age, the tender age of just 21. He then shifted focus to become a macroeconomic research assistant at the Economic and Social Research Institute between 1990 and 1992, where he worked on the Institute's medium-term macro model and also pr provided the first assessment of the use of, of carbon taxes in Ireland. His interest in environmental economics led him to winning the Statistical and Social Inquiry Society of Ireland's Barrington Medal in 1993 uh, for work on sustainable development. Uh, and he also won a scholarship to work on carbon taxes at University College London from 1992 to 1996. While in the UK, he did consulting work for the European Commission on Energy and Environmental Economics, and he lectured on the MSc in Global Environmental Economics at Oxford University. On returning to Ireland in 1996, Danny joined the research department of the Central Bank of Ireland in the run-up to European Monetary Union, which also included time at Banca Italia, uh, working on fiscal stability and monetary targeting. He also lectured on environmental economics part-time at Trinity College Dublin. He returned to the ESRI from 2000 to 2005 to lead short-term forecasting and serve as editor of the Institute's quarterly economic commentary, where he also coordinated a network of 11 national research institutes on short-term forecasting for the European Union. And it was at this time, actually, I first connected with, with Danny. I was working in the United States, and I'd just written uh, an article for the Irish Times on, on social partnership. Um, 
as a small example of Danny's remarkable ability uh, to forge social connections, uh, he contacted me to discuss the, the ideas in the piece uh, and to ask me uh, to, to write an article uh, for the quarterly uh, economic commentary. And we actually ended up uh, co-authoring articles for the Irish Times and the Financial Times that we never actually had met in person that uh, was, a, was a few years later. This genuine interest in ideas and people provided the foundation for the success of the next phase of his remarkable career. Danny joined the Irish Business and Employers Confederation, IBAC, as policy director in 2005, rising rapidly to become the CEO of the Confederation in 2009. His many roles included being business lead on the EU referenda for Lisbon II and the Fiscal Stability Treaty, and serving as the lead business interface with the Troika from 2010 to 2013. During the difficult years of the financial crisis, Danny was a leading advocate for Ireland in the international media, media, correctly predicting Ireland's capacity to recover from the crisis at a time of deep pessimism. As just a sampling of his achievements at IBEC, as IBEC CEO, he has served as an executive board member of Business Europe since 2009 and is currently the longest serving board member across 38 confederations. He was a member of the OECD corporate tax business grouping leading to BEPS. He led Irish business international interactions on Brexit and its aftermaths in London, Brussels, and Washington, D.C. He spoke at the UN General Assembly in Geneva, along with President Higgins, as the employer lead at the International Labour Organization. And he was centrally involved in the state's COVID response, including on pandemic payments to work from home and, crucially, the return to work protocol. Not surprisingly, he's already been the recipient of numerous rewards and recognitions, including his election as the 58th president of the Statistical and Social Inquiry Society of Ireland, his induction as an honorary fellow of the Irish Academy of Engineering for Services to Irish Manufacturing, his becoming a Knight of the Order of the Star of the Italian Republic for services to the European economy and business. And finally, his induction as a member of the Royal Irish Academy as a public policy intellectual. With the many demands on his time, we at the university are honored and grateful that he finds time to serve as a member of the external advisory board of the J. O'Karen School of Business and Economics, where he's a source of much wisdom, advice, and support. Of course, great achievements do not come without strong support structures of your own. In Danny's case, the central pillars have been his wife, Ailish, and their four adult children, Toby, Sam, Eve, and William and also his parents and siblings and extended family, uh, many of whom are here today. While a hugely effective leader of Ireland's largest business organization, in closing, it is important to note that Danny is not your stereotypical advocate for business. Drawing on the foundation set down during his economic studies at this university, Danny has been an influential thought leader on the strategic direction of Ireland's economy, environment, and society. Although one might expect someone in his position to always trumpet the superiority of the private sector over the public sector, Danny has been one of the most thoughtful advocates for the need for public sector investment and the importance of a strong public sector to balance Ireland's hugely successful economy. He embodies the focus on the public good that is a guiding principle for the University of Galway. Recognizing his huge and varied contributions to Irish business, Irish society, and his alma mater, Danny McCoy is today a worthy recipient of an honorary degree in economic science. Preanablis praesis totique universitas. Present to vobus hunt meus filium, quiem shio tamoribus quam doctrina habilum et idoniam esse qui ad admitator, honoris causa. Ad gradum doctoris in scientia economica, idque tibi fea tea mestur, uh, ac spondeo, Totique Academiae. Ego autartata mihi concessa, admitotea gradum doctoratus in scientia economica honoris causa.
Presse, Kier Monis, Confectus Finem a Quesofar Akis, who hate us, Convectationis Universitariae. I will invite Danny McCoy to give an address. Thank you so much for uh, this great honor. Uh, thank you, John, um, for the introduction. From an economist, an economist of such preeminence as John, um, I'm greatly, who I greatly admire, and I'm very proud to have received that citation. Thank you. May I begin, first of all, by congratulating you, the class of 2024, on this rite of passage for you. Special day, it's a moment of achievement an occasion that is both personal, but also something that is shared, shared with your colleagues, with your family, your friends, and the mentors you've had along the way. I'm really honored to address you on this special occasion. I want to acknowledge my own family, my mother Mary and sister Deirdre, who I'm delighted are here today. I owe a debt of gratitude. My wife Ailish, who has been an unfailing constant support to me throughout my career, offering sound advice on every turn, and to our four adult children, Toby, Sam, Eve, and William. I've also been very fortunate with many mentors along the way, too many to mention today who have supported me to this point. Personally, I'm honored to receive this doctorate from my, my alma mater, a great university, one that lives up to one of its shared and stated purposes, the nurturing of global citizens. Remembering my first time on the then UCG campus in 1983, when my late sister Geraldine brought Dr. Tom Acton, my boyhood friend from Tume and now faculty member and purveyor of apocryphal stories, it would appear, uh, here today to look around the campus. And if education is not the filling of the pail, but the lighting of a fire, uh, then my much missed sister Geraldine inspired us both on that day by igniting that flame. I recall my enrollment day in October 1984, memorably queuing outside the Aula Maxima with my mother Mary and my late father Tony. I was full of anticipation and excitement about that journey ahead. I wasn't disappointed. However, little could we have perceived or predicted that my career would have brought us back here today on such an auspicious day. Graduating from the commerce class in October 1987, we were addressed by that titan of Irish business, Dr. Michael Smurfett. In the subsequent BCom class to ours, we had the future dean of the UCD, Dr. Michael Smurfett Business School, and now president of the University of Galway, Kieran O'Hogarty, Professor Kieran O'Hogarty. Kieran, Kieran, having you here today bridges those 37 years. I very much appreciate it, and I certainly appreciate your colleagues, dear Danifa, and all the arrangements for today. Ireland of the 1980s was a different country. They did things differently there. Socially and economically, the transformation has been extraordinary. And whilst today it still not might be bliss for many, the future stays full of opportunity. In my role as head of IBEC, Ireland's largest business representative organization, I see that opportunity every single day. Today's graduating class is entering a world of work that is challenging, no doubt. The twin challenges of digitalization and decarbonization the disembodiment of activity in the virtual world, and the exaggerated decline of the office, limiting as it does the learning by observation opportunities and the creation of personal networks. And yet, the possibilities for fulfilling purposeful careers with good work-life balance in a tolerance of diversity context has never been greater in any generation. Just as generations overlap in our society, so too do they overlap in the workplace. Observing the trends over the last half century, the period of my economic consciousness, the workforce has moved from the predominance of tangible jobs to more intangible ones. In the 1970s, most observable work involved manual activity, often in agriculture 
or in manufacturing. By the start of this millennium, higher proportions of graduates in the labor market saw greater opportunities in service-based activities. Cutting edge and global leading manufacturing in the Western region here in Galway is a notable outlier to that trend. But the trend over the last generation could be characterized by a move from the hands towards the head. And if that be so, then could the next generational move, given the opportunities from the emergence of artificial intelligence, for instance, be from the head towards the heart? I believe it might be so. By heart, I see this as care, as we think of it today. Minding and mentoring. Minding of the young, the vulnerable, and the old. But also, care means mentoring, advising, coaching, directing, and the passing on of wisdom. This is not merely confined to intergenerational transfer of wisdom, but to that which you, the graduating class of today, already possess. The wisdom of your learning here at University of Galway, both from your academic pursuit and also from your network of friends, places a great expectation upon you. To those much is given, much is expected. Your society, your community, your university, your colleagues and your family expect you to be courageous. The French word core is the root of courage. The French word for heart, core, is the root of courage. So you've got to put your heart into it. Your heart is what is expected from you now. Your brain has already been acknowledged by society here today. But in graduating from university, it is much more than that. Now is really the time for you to show courage. And be courageous. Put your heart into whatever it is that you do next. If you do, the world will be the better for it. And this great alma mater of ours will have fulfilled its purpose in producing another global citizen. I'm honored indeed. Thank you. That concludes the formal part of the ceremony today, before, but before the President's address and before we finish, and you go out for light refreshments in the Human Biology Building, which is located to the right as you exit this building, I would like to ask you to join me in thanking those people whose hard work and professionalism ensure that a ceremony such as this runs smoothly, and in particular Ms. Brona Clifford and the conferring team, as well as Ms. Tara Layden and Academic Registry. In addition, let me thank staff from Buildings and Estates, the President's Office, administrative staff from the College and School Offices, audiovisual staff from the Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching, the Marketing and Communications Office, and on Shervi Khan. To you, the graduates, I have just one last thing to say. Go now and make the most of the qualification you've gained and the life ahead of you. Bonagui salt, Neil, a wine, as in law, Tan Yuhan, Akas, Sansil, a Tauro of a Mach Kumai, Gurmayagi Guler. I would now like to introduce the President of the University, Professor Kieran O'Hogarthy, to give his conferring ceremony address and whose speech will conclude our proceedings. Thanks, Gary. It's me, Mark Elvedig. As as welling, Tommy Don of Wakeview. As welling, as on a road do last night at the Winter Market with Cogardius Levilig. When we developed our strategy a number of years ago, as you may be aware, uh, we talked about University of Galway as being a university for the public good. And today, as Danny has said, this is the culmination of that uh, effort. And I think if there's any legacy that one leaves behind. Uh, 
for me, that may be it in that we capture the sense that Galway is different, that there's something different to say, something different to do, some way different to be here. And that being for the public good means we're not here for ourselves, but again, echoing Danny's words about care and the heart being here for each other. Because that's the real value of what we add to the world. And we also then talked about our values as a university. And we, we coalesced around values of respect, openness, excellence, sustainability. And we recently did a survey on these and found that our colleagues, first of all, find them useful for a sense of why we, why we are here, our mission in the world. But secondly, as a guiding light, and that we have made progress on all of those, uh, sustainability in particular, but all of those values. And then we asked, is there something else you'd like to add, a nuance, something different? What, for the next strategy, what would you like us to think about as a university community or communities? And the word which came back was belonging. And my sense is that just as respect captured the mood of five years ago, belonging captures the mood of now. Whether it's because of the dis displacement of COVID, the sense of dispossession and disunity in the world, the sense of disaggregation and loneliness that comes very often out of social media, or whether it's, as Danny has mentioned, that movement of work and expectation from the hand to the head to the heart. Belonging was the word which came back as something which people want more of. And when I thought about that, I thought of a novel by John McGahern, that they may face the rising sun, which to me captures the belonging of a community very, very powerfully. And I brought the book along because they thought it'd be cool for the president to be seen walking around with the book. And John was asking me earlier, it looks very dog-eared. It's in fact a, a copy from the library, which I thought would be cool for the president to be walking around the library as well. Uh, but I just read the first page of McGahern and then maybe take two or three ideas out of it. Uh, it's a short enough piece, so worry not, it's, it, it won't be too long. But I think it captures a particular mood. McGahern was, as we know, a, a writer from the west of Ireland, from Leitrim who wrote about a sense of, in this novel, about a sense of community, uh, which belonging comes through in. The morning was clear. There was no wind on the lake. There was also a great stillness. When the bells rang out for mass, the strokes trembling on the water, they had the entire world to themselves. The doors of the house were open. James he entered without knocking and came in noiselessly until he stood in the doorway of the large room where the Rutlitches were sitting. He stood as still as if waiting under trees for returning wild fowl. He expected his discovery to be quick. There would be a cry of surprise and reproach. He would counter by accusing them of not being watchful enough. There would be welcome and laughter. When the Rutlitches continued to converse calmly about a visit they were expecting that same afternoon, he could contain himself no longer. Such was his continual expectation of discovery that in his eavesdropping he was nearly always disappointed by the innocence he came upon. Hello, 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 he called out softly in some exasperation. Jamesy, they returned to the voice with great friendliness. As he often stole silently and they showed no surprise, you are welcome. You're no good, says Jamesy. I've been standing here for several minutes and haven't heard a bad word said about anybody yet. Not a bad word, he repeated with mocking slowness as he came forward. We never speak badly about people, said one of the Rutledges. We never speak badly about people. It's too dangerous, it can get you in trouble. And I think there's a sense there of belonging and of community that we seek. They had the entire world to themselves. The doors of the house were open. If we think about this university, it's at its best when the gates are open. But if we also think about this country and this society, it is best when it is an open society. If we think back to the generation, in the sense that Danny and myself were born into, this was not a society which was as open as it is now. And the advantage of Ireland is when it is open. And that sense of openness is really important for us here as a university. It not only means that the gates are open, but are open to new ideas, open to diverse opinions, open to different voices, sometimes challenging. And that's what makes this a better place. And we learn from that. As a teaching institution, we also learn. 
and we learn from that sense of openness. And we're, doing, we're not doing pe people a favor because of it. We're actually the better for it. Secondly, Jamesy has that continual expectation of discovery. And that, again, is the hallmark of any university. And I hope that that is your gift that you bring from here, that you've learned a lot of technical knowledge, you've learned a lot about yourselves, but you, you will always have something else I hope you've learned, that continual expectation of discovery, that sense of curiosity, that sense of openness to new ideas, that sense of being open to change, and that sense of continual expectation of discovery. And the third piece, which we often don't talk about in the context of community, but I think we should, is the line, we never speak badly about people. So in this role, it's often challenging. People often challenge me, and there's a, often a challenging voice. And one of the things we need to always find is our better angels, to understand that people aren't necessarily always bad. People come with good intentions. But one of the really important aspects of community that I think we often miss is that never speaking bad about people, finding the best in others, finding not only our better angels, but theirs as well. And as you may know, I'm finishing up here two weeks from today, not that I'm counting. Uh, <laughs> and graduation to me has been a very important bookend to what we're doing. I was with the minister and the teacher yesterday in Dublin, and I was saying to them that this is a really important time of year for us here, because we have graduation finishing and as we know today, CEO coming out, or leaving search results coming out, CEO next week, and new students starting in early September. And the minister said, and I thought it was a great phrase, autumn is a springtime in universities. Because we have the regeneration, yourselves graduating now, and new students coming in. And these are really important times for us. So, and Danny would be the same. We've hosted here presidents, Tishig, Tanishta, ministers. But when I look back in my time here, what I think about most and remember most vividly and most importantly are days like today. The day when I meet many of you for the first and, and the last time possibly. But each of you come up on stage with a different story. Some come cautiously, some come slowly, some come quickly, some come with great enthusiasm. Some point at their uh, parchment, some leave it behind, some give a thumbs up. <laughs> Each of you comes with your own personality. And you may not realize it, but that's really energizing. People think, oh, that must be exhausting. It's not. For me, it's actually something to draw energy from. The importance of every single one of you, more important than those, important though they are in a democracy and in, in public society, of all those visits by presidents, ministers, Tishig, Tanishta, these are the days that matter. And reflecting back on my time here, these are the days that matter. Secondly, I always have spoken here at graduation about being yourselves and the importance of uh, giving your best to the world, and Danny has mentioned this as well, by being yourselves and having that courage, uh, that sense of heart. And when I look back on my time here, you have I, times you're proud and times you regret. But the times you regret are the times when you do, didn't do what you thought were the right thing, was the right thing. And the times where, you, where you're proud is where you did do what you thought was the right thing. So reflecting back for you, reflecting forward, being yourselves is an important part of what you give to the world. And doing what you think is the right thing is the time that you will have pride. And sometimes when you can't because of organizational or cultural challenges or other uh, shaping in the world, when you can't do what you think is the right thing, those are the times you'll regret. And finally, I would also say that sense of openness being really important. That sense of openness to other ideas and different ideas. But most importantly, and sometimes the one that's most challenging, is not speaking badly of others not thinking badly of others. You might find them challenging, difficult, a, a, a challenging and, and sometimes disruptive voice. For me, part of the sense of community that we should have, for me, part of a community where there's a sense of belonging is that we don't see that 
as a bad thing, but we see the good in others, and we speak well of others rather than badly. So that sense of going back to that they may face the rising sun. Today, three things I would say. The doors of the house were open, and that's when we have the best time and the best advantage. That's that sense of continual expectation of discovery is what I hope you bring from here. And thirdly, that emphasis, that idea that we don't speak badly of others here. That's what brings community, and that's what, that's what brings belonging, as it did here. Ramin Malgavidig, Gregorikas. And I mentioned that these are the days that matter. I'd like to thank you, first of all, Gramaha Gavilig, Os Veling, Mardurk Began Tus, Os Rawa Stadjerling, Os Fanakling Stadjer, Os Veling and you. Thank you all very much. We know that uh, this has uh, been a, a great choice for you at University of Galway. I'd like to thank you all very much and congratulate you. Wish you the very, very best for the future. I'd like to also, with the attitude, the gratitude that we come with, thank my colleagues, uh, professional staff, academics, technicians, all of those here with us today and those who couldn't join us because of other commitments who make this university what it is. I'm very grateful to you all. Ramin Malgav, thank you. And finally, to all those who have joined us, whether in the hall, online, or we must remember all, also those who join us in spirit. We know that our students, they are graduates of good times and bad, happy times and sad. And when they do, they rely on your support, your encouragement, and they rely on you turning up for them as you did today. So on their behalf, on behalf of our students, now our graduates, I'd like to thank you too for your sense of support, your sense of community, your sense of... Uh, uh, sense of belonging that you brought to our students. Gramila Mahagavillig, thank you. The doors of the house were open. There was a continuous expectation of discovery. And we never speak badly about people here. Gramila Mahagav, thank you.